licensed professional counselor. She earned her MD degree from Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Arizona and her master's in counseling uh, from ASU. Her focus is brain health and mental health. Currently, she works with the Neurology Associates of East Valley, a medical clinic with three neurologists, a, psych a psychiatric nurse practitioner, a neuropsychologist, and a physical therapist. Dr. Whitley has been adjunct faculty at Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine and Glendale Community College, and is past, about to be past, president of the SCNM Alumni Association. And when she's not working, you'll find her likely either in the pool, on a bike, or running and training for Ironman. So with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Marnie Whitley. Thing I tried in Joanna came to my open house. Yeah. 
out in Levine, because that's where I lived at the time. And I just rented a space, and it was a very strange little space. Uh, there was a horse business there. It was a tap and feed shop in Levine. There was another natural path in the building, and I just rented a room there. And we tried to make a go at it. And I learned a lot of things. Um, it was exactly how I wanted it set up. And um, I had a few patients. And most of the patients, if, it didn't, if I didn't take insurance, they weren't going to come see me. So probably six months, eight months out of that process, I kind of realized this wasn't working. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Now part of what I was doing in conjunction with doing that was I went and I was um, teaching at a community college, uh, just teaching uh, college success classes essentially. And that was my counseling degree allowed me to do that. I did that. I had done it before, so it was kind of an easy thing to go do to make some money because as you know, you need some income to kind of help support your life while you're trying to figure out how am I going to make my world work for me. And then I also started here um, doing some adjunct teaching, and they opened up a position here uh, for a learning specialist. And I'm still kind of going, I have this naturopathic degree. I want to do something with it, but I don't know exactly what I want to do with it. I have this experience in the counseling world, and I'm teaching classes on college success. They're asking for that at SCNM. Maybe somehow I can come here and figure it out. And so that's what I did. I got the, I was a part-time position here, and I worked with another um, ND in the learning specialist world. And I don't know who's doing that job now, but I'm pretty sure they're still, they're still a learning specialist, right? So God, I was doing that, and while I was doing that, it really got me more interested in the brain, you know, kind of back into the psychology world that I grew out of, um, and. Some things that I started realizing about myself, and this was like the first thing, was I had to start reflecting on who am I, and what makes me me, and what can I be good at. And I realized I'm, I came from the counseling world. I am a counselor. If I'm not doing that, I'm probably not doing whatever is true to me. It's my nature to do that, all right? So I had this shift in my own head a little bit, who I was. And I finally, you know, we have this thing, you know, who are you? What's my identity? What do I identify as? And so you go out in the world and you say, hi, I'm Arnie Whitley, I'm a naturopath. I had to shift that in my own head a little bit and say, I'm actually a counselor who has a naturopathic degree. And once I did that, my whole world kind of started coming together in what I wanted to do. And at the same time, I attended a couple of conferences that sort of set in mind how I could do that in my life. And so I set in on some talks on uh, traumatic brain injury and some talks regarding neurological conditions like Parkinson's and MS and things like that. And I started saying, okay, here's what I want to do. I had no place to do this, by the way, but I started formulating in my head what I wanted to do. I want to be in an office where there are other people, and I didn't know who those people would be, that can support me in doing the work that I want to do. And at the time, I'm still teaching here, doing the learning specialist position and everything. And I just started thinking about, okay, I like this traumatic brain injury work. I like counseling. I like behavioral health. I like the neurological system. I need that. I don't remember exactly when. I looked on the website that Joanna runs for the ND job link. One day, there's a posting for a neurology office that is looking for an ND. Now, at this point in time, I was not ready to leave what I was doing. But as I sat there and I looked at it, I was like, this is what I've been creating in my head. And it's right there on the screen. Right? And I said, if not now, it's, this opportunity is probably not ever going to come my way again. And so I applied. 
something, right? This first thing that I have on here, being honest with yourself and being honest with your potential employer, was key to my getting that job, all right? I sat down for, in the interview there, and for the first 20 minutes, the business owner, one of the business owners, sat there for 20 minutes telling me every reason he did not think he could hire a naturopathic physician. He's like, I've interviewed four of you, and I can't do it. And so he gave me all of the reasons why. We ask too much money for how much we can bring in. We have unrealistic expectations of what they can do for us. Um, and so I just sat there, let him tell me all the reasons why they couldn't hire me. I said, okay, that's cool. Let me just tell you what I have in my head. And I did. I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. Here's what I want to do. I want to work. At that time, I was doing uh, neurofeedback training. I was like, I would like to bring in some neurofeedback. I want to do some counseling. I want to do some naturopathic work. I want to work with the neurological population and the mental health population. He's like, OK, how much money do you want? Or no, first question, he was like, do you want to do that here? And I said, yes, I want to do that here. And he said, how much, would it, how much do you want? And I told him, and I'm not going to tell you how much I told him. <laughs> I told him. He actually offered me more than I told him I wanted. All right, so I thought that was a cool thing. Now, how did I come up with the amount of money that I was willing to take? It was like, okay, I have to drive from Central Phoenix to Chandler. What is that worth to me? How much? Is that commute? And what can I manage in my life? And it was pretty simple. And I was like, if you can't do that, that's OK. But he offered me more than I was asking. So I was like, I'll take it, right? I've been there two and a half years now. It does not look anything like what we had talked about, kind of getting to um, the which battles are you willing to fight, all right? He wanted me, I want you to see patients in 15 minute increments. Okay? I know who I am. It's not going to happen. Okay, let's compromise a little bit. Let's say I can do intakes in an hour, and follow ups in half an hour, and I can do this in half an hour. This is going to take me an hour. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I kind of compromised a little bit. But I'll tell you right now, I see patients in an hour, every one of them, because that's who I am. I can't, even my follow-ups are an hour long. Um, I'm a slow person, and I don't mean slow in bad way. It's just my nature. I'm not going to go fast at anything, all right? Um, I, I resonate very well with purpose, right? <laughs> Right? I'm a turtle, and I have embraced it, and I live with it. For an intake, doing it in an hour is a struggle for me. I need a little more time, right? If I have it, I take it. They don't understand that, right? But if I don't have a patient coming in after that patient, I will take an hour and a half to do it, and I can get it done. Right? If I have to do it in an hour, I do. I don't like making my patients wait out there in the waiting room for too terribly long. Most of them don't care, though, because they're used to waiting hours sometimes, right? When you're working, when I'm working, and I can only really speak to my experience, and this was kind of speaking to what is it like to work in an office with medical doctors. Uh, we have four now, four neurologists. It's not interdisciplinary, which would be ideal. We are not working together. We are multi, whatever, multi-disciplinary. That's what we are, all right? They have no idea what I do. The owner, one of the owners, um, says I do voodoo. My mom's good at that, I don't care. <laughs> He's like, it's magic. I don't know what she does, but it's good and it's magic. So that's kind of how he, he sees me. He also sees me as, as Valium, because apparently I'm a very calming person. I don't know. I know I don't feel that way, but that's what he said. <laughs> um, and you know, I took that as a compliment, not anything else. 
Um, and the MDs, they don't know what I do. None of them have really asked me what I do. I have, you know, I, I give them information about what I do, and they refer people to me, right? So they have somebody who comes in and they are like, I want to do something different than medications. Go see Marty. I go, all right. They have somebody who comes in, they have anxiety and depression. Go see Kirby, go see Marty. Kirby's our psychiatric nurse practitioner. They come in and they've had a head trauma or a stroke or they're having some cognitive difficulties. Go see Jana, who's our neuropsych, and go see Marty. So I get all of these patients. I also get patients who are just wanting some general health care. Um, I currently have quite a bit of patients who are getting acupuncture, which I think is just amazing um, and does a lot for a lot of different conditions. So if you're not thinking about incorporating that, think about incorporating that. One of the things that I did going into this was I tried not to have expectations of the other physicians in the office and let them be who they are. I did have a sit down talk with them and say, here's some of the things that I do and here's how I can help your patients. And they were very thankful, very grateful, but again, did not ask them questions about anything I do. They do see patients in 15 minutes and they're in and out, in and out. They just don't have time. Some of them aren't interested. Some of them I've tried to say, I have this patient and they have this problem and I'm doing this and they're like, okay, what do you want me to do? And so I tell them, here's what I want you to do. And then they do it and, it and it works. But they don't have time to kind of go back and forth and figure out, you know, how could we work together a little bit better. And if I could change one thing, that would be it. On the same, at the same time, I, that's not my personality. If they wanted it, and they sought it out, I would be happy to give it to them. But it's not my personality to say, you know what you need is you need these things. If you are a person who is much more outgoing, extroverted, and that's more of your style, do it, all right? Um, because that's that piece of know who you are and know what's going to make you happy and content in what you do. Um, if you're not, if you are in a medical office and you're not getting what you need, communication is one of the key pieces to that. It's not being afraid to say, you know, and I had this, we had a new physician that came into the office. He was not giving me any referrals. And so, and he would not take the time. This was probably, he would not take the time to sit and talk to me. So I read it, wrote him a paper that said, if you have this patient, here's how I can help them. If you have this kind of patient, here's how I can help them. And he was very thankful for that because he just wasn't willing to sit down and talk to me about it. But he was willing to look at my letter. And after that, I started getting referrals from him very quickly. Do decide how much energy you want to spend on the different issues, whatever environment that you're working on, um, to resolve. If you are trying to resolve an issue that can't be resolved, figure out how can you work around it if you're where you want to be. Okay. Fortunately, I work in an environment they're willing to do, you know, if I ask them for something, they give it to me. When I ordered my supplies, they're like, man, you're cheap. <laughs> you know, because I mean, the owners, that's what they're looking at is, can we make money from what you do? Um, and so it's been good that way. And I, I, I'm just fortunate that I did what I did and they were looking for somebody that could work. Also, when they want things, um, they want things in their clinic. And one of the things that they wanted was um, somebody who would do medical marijuana certification. And I mean, honestly, Ali, the business owner, anytime they want to do something new, he asks me, can you do it? And because initially he's like, can you, can you, counsel, can you do counseling? I'm like, yeah, I'm a counselor, I can do counseling. Okay, can you do neuropsych testing? I'm like, well, I can't really do neuropsych testing. However, there was a neuropsychologist in the office who was willing to work with me, and I actually did get to do some neuropsych testing. 
not that I would ever go out and do it on my own, but I have a much better feel for what it is, what it does, and I would feel comfortable sitting down and doing an assessment with somebody. But he came in and he's like, can you do that? And I'm like, no, I can't do that. He's like, okay, can you do cognitive rehabilitation? I was like, yes, that I can do, because I had some training in that, I can do that. We were getting an MRI, MRI machine, he's like, can you do the MRI? I'm like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> right? So it's just been kind of funny. Um, anytime they want to bring something in, they always come and ask me to do it. I can't do it. Um, I think I kind of lost my place. Um, but it was fun. Um, yeah. So anyway, given my story, anything you want to know, or questions that you have about what I've said, because I've talked about it, I'm not sure I've been logical sense. So, I'm billed out as a specialist under the, uh, the main physician there. All of the physicians um, are. Not, even, not just me, but you know, the other neuro, uh, neurologists also are billed under our main neurologist. So, if they see the neurologist first, then most insurance companies cover my services. They do not cover acupuncture. So, acupuncture is cash paid. And we have very, very reasonable rates for acupuncture. And, um, because we wanted to make it affordable for our patients. They're willing to, another nice thing about my, at this point, is the business owners are like, okay, I broke even last year. They were happy with that. They're like, we didn't lose money on you. We're happy. Because it was more than they expected at the time. So um, they, they do work. Were the um, patients asking for that? Or why did they Why did they want a natural path? Because the business owner's wife saw a natural path and said, we need one of them in our clinic. That and at the same time, they were trying to bring people into the office who they tended to refer out to. So that's why we now have me. That's why we have a psychiatric nurse practitioner. That's why we have neuropsychology. It's why they have an MRI machine. Those are the things that they refer out, and physical therapy. Those are the things that they're always referring out. They wanted to bring money into the clinic. So, but I had his wife on my side. <laughs> Um, 
are they willing to send you to the to continue further your education now? Or I am very, very lucky. I get, they pay for my licensure, they pay for my continuing education, they pay for my DBA, they, they cover my classes. Up to a certain point. They don't cover my, there is a limit. <laughs> but they do. I would say that is probably a very unique situation. Okay, so you don't see that often with people working hard Most of the, well, most of the people that I, natural paths that I know, they are paying for them themselves. But a lot of my coworkers, or you know, people that I went to school with, that I continue to stay in touch with, they're in private practice, so they have to. Yeah. I would say I don't know a lot who are working in other clinics. A lot of them are in private practice and doing well. So, yeah. um, actually, there's a question to ask. The question uh, in terms of your practice, how much do uh, you spend using other modalities as a natural path? How much do you practice do you spend? So probably about a third of my patients are counseling only, right? And so if they come in and that's all they really want, that's all I do. Could there be other things that I do with them? But I don't because they're not coming to me wanting to change their diet and take my supplements and do that kind of thing. So about a third of them are just counseling. The rest of them are a fair mix of um, cognitive rehabilitation. Uh, so people who have, might be uh, in the early stages and some late stages of uh, dementia, um, people who have brain injury, traumatic you know, car accidents, or strokes, uh, things like that. I have probably a handful, a couple of handfuls of people who just want supportive care for overall health. And then um, the other are more neurological. So actually, I don't see that many Parkinson's patients or MS patients. Um, I do have a, a few epilepsy patients and things like that, but um, not a tremendous amount of neurological. Some, but most of them are just for that supportive overall health piece. Um, the modalities that I use most outside of my counseling are just nutritional changes, um, supplementation, and we go by way of full script. We had an in-office medicinary, but when we brought the MRI machine in, space got very limited. So now we do it through full script, which is a great, great program to be associated with. Um, and oh, I forgot where I was going there. <laughs> oh yeah, acupuncture. Yes, yeah, acupuncture. Those are the those are the things that I would typically. So those four things. I don't do physical manipulation. Um, I've done some homeopathy, um, but I find that it, my patients aren't necessarily willing to go through that process. So um, the long intake, although I don't usually do the long intake, um, but they're just the, the trial and error part of it. They are not necessarily willing to do. Maybe it's just because I'm not a great. So then, my next question was in regards to um, integrative health mm -hmm. or integrative medicine as a large. Um, how do you think you fit into that? I, mean, I see major institutions like Mayo Clinic incorporating integrative health, but uh, really not sure how they are doing uh, MDs as a part of that. And you have a lot of MDs now doing, you know, holistic health. Yeah, so. so it's just a kind of gray area where I'm just trying to kind of see the forest of the trees. You know? So there, there is a lot I think that can be done, um, and I think that um, there is a conference that if you have an interest in doing integrative medicine, um, it's the uh, Well, the mental health one is the Integrative Medicine for Mental Health is an excellent conference to go to where you have all disciplines are represented there. Um, and organizations, some of them are very receptive to naturopathic approaches. Some people do want to learn. It's just where I'm at, that's not, they, they're like, good, you're here, you like that, and, and that's good. And I think 
somebody of a different personality than I have would be very effective going into this practice in particular. And you know, they could probably change the, the whole dynamic, right, of what that looks like. Um, but it would take somebody that's not me. But I think the potential is there. Because when you go to an integrated conference, you see that, yes, this is happening. Um, where everybody, there's MDs, there's um, functional medicine, which are you know, the MDs who are really wanting to be able to speak our language a little bit better. Um, and then there's Indies, um, you'll have uh, nurse practitioners, um, all, all sorts of people. So it's seeking it out and finding where they are and learning from them, how, how they make it work. I really wish I could remember the name of it. So, AIC, is it ACAM? American there's College. ACAM. There's ACAM might be the other one that was very integrated in attendance when I went to that one. Yeah. ACAM. Yeah, there's also the Integrative Symposium. Yeah, I've not been to that one. That's usually but You have to find it, you have to look for it, but it's there. And I think in are being made there. Okay. okay. The one last piece that I would really, really encourage is once you graduate from here, give yourself some time to recover, right? It's gonna take some recovery time. Finding balance while you're in medical school is going to be a challenge. Um, it just is. And finding it once you leave here is also a challenge, um, but it's, it's very important to find that. And you know, I have found it, you know, um, my funky tan ones, right? Because <laughs> I did a race this last weekend, and you know, I have found it, and I'm kind of losing it because you know, as I get closer to November, things are pressure on the, the personal life are getting a little more hectic than work life. Um, but you gotta balance those things. And if you find the balance in your work and what you do, you'll be able to find the balance in life outside of work. So set clear boundaries for yourself. Know what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. Know, am I willing to stay three hours late every day to get my notes done? Or am I going to leave at the end of the day and do the best I can tomorrow to get as much done as I can tomorrow? Right? Um, I tend to fall on the latter side of that. I leave when I need to leave, and I try my best. It actually, charting's always been a problem for me. Um, it was my, my challenge when I was a counselor, it's my challenge now. So now they got me the dragon, so I talk to it, and I tell you what, that helps so much. Because we sort of figured out that I tend to be, I have to think things, and think things, and think things, and it's easier to say them than to write them. I'm always changing what I write, but if I just say it, then it's done. So. Cool. So how many hours do you work? I work from eight to well. I usually go in about seven fifteen, seven thirty, depending on whether I swim in the morning or not. Um, I try to get as much done as I can before eight o'clock. I see patients for an hour. I usually have seven patients a day. Um, right now, I might have. Um, four or five, four days a week where I have six or seven patients and then maybe one or two days where I might only have four or five. But for the most part, I have a fairly full schedule all week long. So there's not a lot of time for charting those. So I do fall behind, but I try to catch up. I do do sometimes, I take it home, but I usually don't work on it at night. It's usually because get up very early, I usually do before I go. So, you know, you figure out what works for your life and how you make it work. And I also don't feel as self-conscious writing my notes verbally if nobody's you really can't do that. And I really apologize if all my moving around is the camera this. <laughs> You're good. Any other questions?